Okay, so question nine on this. Where does the point 43 lie? Well, it does lie on f of x. Where does it lie when we put the graph of f of x through the transformation of f of 3x? Okay, so the f of 3x um, does the horizontal um, axis by 1 over 3, which is the x values. Okay, so that means we end up with the x values being multiplied by 1 over 3 times the x value and the y value stays the same. So we end up with 4 over 3, 3. Number 2, a half y equals f of x. Quick rearrangement of that gives us y equals 2 of f of x. And in this case, we are changing the vertical axis, the y-axis, by a scale factor of 2. So we're going to end up with the x staying the same and 2 times the y value, 2 times 3. So we end up with 4, 6. Okay. With this one, we shift the entire graph to the left. So the opposite of the to the right, so it's the opposite of the plus or the minus here. Okay, so uh, 4 has a 5 plus 4, okay, so notice the sign change, and the 3 on the y-axis stays the same, so we end up with 9, 3 as a coordinate, new coordinate for P. Minus y equals f of x. Well, that's the same as y equals minus f of x. And just like question 2 over here, you are multiplying by the minus 1 on the outside of the y-axis. So you end up with 4 comma minus 1 times 3, which gives you minus 3. Ultimately, with the minus f of x, it's the same as doing a reflection in the x-axis. Okay, so on this one, a little bit more rearranging to get it down to y equals first. Okay, so y plus 2 equals a half f of x, just dividing by 2 on both sides. Then I'm going to bring this 2 across, so I end up with y equals a half f of x minus 2. Okay, so we've got two distinct things here. We've got the multiplying by the half on the outside, and we've got the minus 2 on there. So multiplying by the 2 or the half on the outside will give you a half times the 3, okay, and the minus 2 will also be acting on the y value because it will be moving the entire graph down, so I'll be taking that and it will be moving it down, okay. Nothing has happened to the 4, okay, to the x values, they are all staying the same. So we end up with 4, comma, what's that, 1.5, take away two is minus a half so four minus a half for that last one okay so that's question nine part a part b part b then um p is transformed to a point two three, um, P one is two three. Write down a possible transformation. So what has happened to it? If you have a look at what P one was, oh, yeah, not P one, but original P, it was four three. So we're looking for something that does not affect the. Um, y values only something that affects the x values 
that would be this like this first one up here and it needed to be multiplied by a half which would be a 2 so 2x so we could say y is equal to f of 2x okay um, part C part C then P is transformed so let's call it P2 is transformed to 8 6 6 okay right then a possible transformation of f of x okay if f of x is translated only and if it is stretched only so part i is when it is translated okay so translation is literally the moving of the whole um, x and y coordinate system so not changing the shape of the graph just moving it around so what has actually happened here it has gone plus four and plus three okay so if we have an f of x and we want it to um, go plus 4, we have to take away 4 on the x's. And if we want it to do a plus 3 on the y's on the x side, we do exactly that, plus 3. OK. In terms of part 2, for the stretch, Okay, so we saw in the one above it, we can stretch it by half in it with a whole number, but we can make it bigger by multiplying it by two, by multiplying it by a half x, because it flips it over and thus it multiplies it by two. Okay, in terms of stretching the... Um, y ax y coordinate that's the same as part two of the question one here okay and you can see there that what we need there is we need to make it into a two on the x side so it's a two f of x f of half of x now okay so we're going to need to put that two in from previous okay and that gives you the two transformations all right fun question Question 10, then. All right. OK, so question 10a. So we have y equals minus a over x squared. OK, and we have um, y equals x squared 3x plus b okay and both a and b are positive constants a and b positive okay sketch the two graphs on a set of axes showing coordinates of any point where the curve touches or crosses the axes okay set of coordinates first all right so minus a over x so minus a over x squared as we said is coming down here and it's going to be in the two bottom corners here okay so this is there and that is there okay and that is y equals minus a over x squared okay 
as the A gets bigger, the curve sort of comes out a little bit further each time. Okay, with the next one, next one, we are going to have roots here, and we're going to have roots here of x equals 0, x equals 0, and for this one we're going to have x equals b divided by 3. Okay, so it's a positive cubic, but it's going to just touch, and because b is positive it's going to be out this way, and that's going to be b of a third there, so it's going to come through here, and it's going to scoot down and come back through where b equals uh, b divided by 3 is where it's going to cross the um, x-axis, but it can't be b divided by 3 because when you start with this up here, you start with 3x plus b equals 0, and that makes 3x equals to minus b x equals minus b over 3, which means we are actually here, which is minus b over 3, and so our line is coming up here and then just touching the x-axis. Okay, at the origin. So, that's C1, this is C2. Um, y equals x squared, 3x plus b, or C2, this one is C1, this is C1 as well. Okay, use your sketch and state a given reason why the number of solutions to the equation. Okay, so they want to know what happens when they are equal, basically. They want to know how many solutions has x squared. So if we have these two, we can say that minus a over x squared equals x squared over 3x plus b. When we multiply that out, we end up with 0 equals x to the 4, still multiplying 3x plus b plus a. Okay, so the solution here only one solution. Okay, question 10, done. So question 11. Question 11 then, factorise completely x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x. Okay, everything in there has a term of x in it, so we end up with x squared. Um, I should write down what we're doing here. Factorise. Okay, x squared minus 6x plus 9. Okay, what makes 9 minus 3 and minus 3? So x is x minus 3, x minus 3. That would give me a positive 9, double that, minus 6. Okay, so there it is. If you really wanted to, I suppose you could write it as this. Okay, squared. Right then. Sketch the curve, showing clearly the coordinates of the points where the curve touches or crosses the axes. Okay, drawing that. That's a very small one. Okay. So we've got x equals 0 and x equals 3 and x equals 3. So we better put an x equals 3 on here. Better put a 0 in here. So it comes through the 0. It's a positive 1. So and it will just skim there. Okay. Okay. 
that's A, that's B. Don't forget to label everything up and put arrows on it. Okay, not all examiners will let you off with it. Okay, part C. The point with the coordinate minus 4 lies on the curve with an equation where k is a constant. Find the two possible values of k. So we have got y equals x minus k cubed minus 6 x minus k squared plus 9 times x minus k. Okay, the point with the coordinate minus 4, 0. So minus 4, 0, probably a little bit further than that, minus 4 is here, minus 4, 0. Okay, if you have a look at this, this is basically y equals f of x minus k. Okay. Which is the same as what we had up here. So it looks like this, but it has moved across and it's given us a point of minus 4 on there. So if we want it to move to the left, we have to do a plus 4 shift. Okay, so we would get f of x plus 4. Okay, meaning k is equal to minus 4. Okay, and also we could move it so that the 3 touches it. So that would be 3 to the 0 and there, so that's a 7. So we would be looking at f of x plus 7, meaning k could also be minus 7.